All right. Well, good afternoon and good evening, everyone. It's me again, your girl, Cassandra Taylor from Top Flight Defense Incorporated. I'm here today once again with Ms. Josephine Mueller from the Social Security Administration. And we are going to have a discussion on their website and resources, but always she gives us information, much needed information about our account. So Ms. Mueller, if you don't mind introducing yourself and um, we can get this party started. Sounds great. Thank you, Ms. Cassandra, for having me here on your platform for Top Flight Defense. I am just so grateful to always be able to, to come here and share information with you all here. So thank you for, for watching this Facebook Live. If you're watching it now or if you're watching it later, thank you for checking us out. And my name is Josephine Mueller, as Ms. Cassandra stated. I am a public affairs specialist with the Social Security Administration. And you may be wondering, well, what does a public affairs specialist do, Josephine? Well, I am somebody who goes out and shares information about Social Security's benefits and programs. But what qualifies for me for that? How, how did I get here? Well, when I first started with Social Security, I was one of the friendly faces at your local Social Security office. So I was one of the individuals that would process applications for retirement benefits, disability benefits, Medicare benefits, applications for replacements, and new Social Security cards, and I would answer questions that people had. So not only was I taking applications in person at the local office, but I was also answering phones, and so I was one of the friendly voices that you would hear when you would call your local office. So now I have the pleasure to be a public affairs specialist and share information with the community and be here with you today. But without further ado, I am gonna go ahead and start sharing my screen because I am here today to share information about Social Security's online services. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And I want everybody to know here that the information that I'm providing today on December 27th, 2023 is accurate as of today. And if you are watching this video in the future, please make sure you visit our website at socialsecurity.gov to ensure that the information that you are viewing today is up to date. Information does change from time to time. So if you're viewing this after December 27, 2023, it could be that the information has changed. So please check us out on our website at socialsecurity.gov. Now, participation in this presentation does not constitute an endorsement by the Social Security Administration or its employees of the organizations and information and products not provided by the Social Security Administration. But any time that I have the pleasure to come on here with Ms. Cassandra, I like to share with everybody the best ways to conduct business with us at Social Security. Because many times people will ask me, well, Josephine, what is the best way to get in contact with Social Security? And well, I let people know that the most, one of the quickest, easiest ways to contact us is by visiting us online on socialsecurity.gov. If you visit us on our website, you will see that there's lots of information on our website that shares that, you know, shares information about retirement benefits, disability, Medicare, survivors, and just everything related to Social Security is on our website. But you can also complete many of your transactions on our website if you create a My Social Security account. Once you've created your My Social Security account, you can request a replacement Social Security card online. You can request a replacement Medicare online. For people who are not yet approaching retirement age, you may be wondering, okay, well, why would I need to create a My Social Security account? Well, it's important to check your earnings to make sure that the earnings that are on our records are correct because your earnings will impact your retirement benefits. So it's really important to keep track of that and to estimate, look at estimates of your benefit. So if you haven't already created a My Social Security account, I encourage you to visit us online at socialsecurity.gov or ssa.gov and create your online account. So that's the first way to conduct business with us. But there are alternative ways. 
if you are unable to conduct business with us online, say maybe we understand here that sometimes individuals may not have access to online services or maybe just feel more comfortable doing business with us in other ways. You can always call us. We can be contacted at 1-800-772-1213. That is our national social security hotline. So many of the transactions get, that can be done either online or in person can also be done on the phone. So if you call us at 1-800-772-1213, we may be able to complete the transaction right over the phone. If not, we'll schedule you an appointment so that we can call you over the phone and complete your transaction. And the, the last um, best method to get in contact with us is by visiting us at our local office. All of our local offices are open. We are seeing individuals as walk-ins, which means you don't need an appointment to come see us. If you're unable to conduct your business online or by phone, you are welcome to visit us at the local field office. Our offices are open from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday with the exceptions of holidays. Please note that if you do visit us in person at our office, you are um, most likely to experience some wait time. So that's why we always encourage people, if you're able to go online, if you're able to contact us, um, please try those methods first. And of course, if you're unable to conduct your business via online or via phone, you can most certainly visit us at the local office. Now you may be wondering, well, how do I know where my local office is located? If you go to www.ssa.gov forward slash locator, this page will come up and you will see that there's an area where you can put in your zip code, click locate. Once you do that, the local office address will appear for you. In addition to the local address, you will see the local, ad the local office fax number. So if you need to submit documents, you can fax it over to that local fax number and you're gonna see the local field office phone number as well. So Social Security is with you throughout life's journey. And of course, I do want to share with you our webpage and our online resources. But I also want to start off by letting everybody know that when we are working and we are looking at our pay stubs, we are seeing that we're paying into taxes. And we're paying into Social Security taxes, which is FICA. And these taxes are um, federal insurance uh, taxes. It's so it's FICA what we're paying into, and it stands for Federal Insurance Contributions Act. That's what FICA stands for. Now, the total deducted is 7.65%, and our employer matches this for a total of 15.3%. So when we're working, we are contributing into these FICA taxes so that we later on, once we reach retirement age, we can collect Social Security retirement benefits. Um, if the unexpected were to happen and um, if we were to become disabled, those benefits would be there for us. And there's also children's benefits, survivor's benefits, spousal benefits, Medicare benefits, and so much more. So Social Security is there for us throughout life's journey. And I just wanted to share with everybody how Social Security is with us throughout life's journey. Because when we start working, that part of our journey helps start the process. Now, Social Security has a lot of calculators on our website. If you visit us at ssa.gov forward slash planners forward slash calculators, you will see that there are several calculators that you can use to estimate your benefits. So if you are curious about benefits and you would like estimations, I encourage you to check us out here at ssa.gov forward slash planners forward slash calculators. Now this right here is our website. So whenever visiting us, I want to make sure that I highlight that you want to put .gov behind Social Security name because there's other sites that are posing as us but they are simply not us you want to make sure that when you visit us you type in social security dot gov dot gov there's other sites that might have dot something else that is not us we are at social security dot gov and on our website you're gonna see that there's lots of information. This is what our website looks like. It's this uh, beautiful blue and white screen and it has information about 
benefits, applying for benefits, a little bit of everything, you name it, anything regarding Social Security, that information is on our website. And I encourage you to check us out. I encourage you to create a My Social Security account because there's so much that you can do with a My Social Security account. Now, if you go to create a Social Security account, this is the page that you are going to see. You're going to go ahead and click create if you don't already have an account. If you have an account, you'll go ahead and sign in. And basically, when you create an account, you are going to need a phone number and a valid email address because this is how we're going to verify who you are. So it's important to have those two things, a, a phone number, a cell phone number if you have one, and an email address. Now, once you have a My Social Security account, you're going to be able to do so much. You're going to be able to request a replacement Social Security card. Um, say you misplaced your card. My husband, he um, put his card in such a safe place here at the house that he couldn't remember and I didn't know where it was at. So he was seeking to um, get a replacement card. And all he had to do was go online, create his account, and request the card online he did it within like five minutes and he got the card in the mail within five to ten business days and he didn't even have to leave the house so it is a, a quick efficient way of requesting your social security card but the only way you can request it um in in that way as far as doing it online is by creating a my social security account that's the way you can complete the process online is by creating a my social security account you can always start the process online to get a replacement or a new social security card, but sometimes you might need to go into the local field office. The system will let you know what you need to do, but if you have access to a My Social Security account and you just need a replacement social security card, many times you can just finish the process in the comfort of your own home. Now, you can also request estimates on your My Social Security account, you can look at estimates to see what your benefit would be at different ages. You're able to request a replacement Medicare card as well as a benefit verification letter, which many times is also called an award letter, which shows how much you receive from Social Security every month. You can do this if you have a My Social Security account in the comfort of your own home. You can also change your address, check the status of an application, you can give proof that you do not receive benefits if you're not receiving benefits. So even if you're not receiving Social Security benefits, it's very beneficial to have a My Social Security account. You can create an account as early as age 18. So if you are 18 and um, you would like to create a My Social Security account, you can do so. So it's, um, it's something nice to have because you're able, like I said, you're able to request that replacement in the comfort of your own home if you need a replacement. And so this right here, you'll see on the screen, it says uh, replacement social security card, how to apply for one. This is an example of a my social security account. And I will tell you, this is exactly what it looked like when my husband requested his replacement card. This is what you're going to see, and you're going to see where it says request a replacement card, and it's circled in red. You want to click there. Once you click there, it's going to ask you to complete some information. You follow the prompts. You click submit, and then it's going to let you know that your card's going to come to you in the mail in five to ten business days. In addition to um, being able to request a replacement Social Security card and being able to uh, look at estimates, you're going to see your social security statement. Your statement is that document that used to get sent out to us every year, several years ago. I started working when I was 15. And I remember when I first started working, um, after a few years, after a year of working and I was filing my taxes, I was seeing this statement come to my mailing address. And it would say social security. It was a green and white paper at the time. It twofold, threefold, and it would show me all of my earnings, and it wasn't very much because I just started working at 15. It would show me my earnings. It would show me estimates. It would show me information. That's 
statement used to come out every year to, to our mailing address. However, now we have access to it not just every year. We can look at it every month if we wanted to or every day because if you have a My Social Security account, you can see the statement online on your account. So it doesn't come to us in the mail anymore every year like it used to, um, but we can access it online if we have a My Social Security account. I do want to note that individuals who are 60 or older and do not have a My Social Security account will still see that paper statement. It's for individuals who are under age 60 that won't see that paper statement come to them in the mail. In order to see it, you'll want to create your My Social Security account. And so this right here is an example of a, a Social Security statement. And it is a blue and white, and it has your earnings on it. It has estimates of what your benefit would be at different ages. But in addition to that, your My Social Security account is going to have fact sheets. And these fact sheets are going to be catered to you based off of your age and the information that you may want to know at that point in your life. So if you are somebody who is between age groups 18 to 48, there's going to be fact sheets that specifically give you information um, regarding your age group in your My Social Security account. Now your My Social Security account, that's all your information. It's not general, it's very specific to you. So when you create your account, you're going to see, wow, I can see my information. A lot of the information that a social security representative can see on our side, you will have access to it at your fingertips. So it's very specialized, personalized to you. It is truly your social security account. So there will be fact sheets in there that will give you information that you'll need to know um, during the age that you are at that moment. So your social security account grows with you and it is with you throughout your lifetime. So if you are approaching Medicare age or you're already Medicare age, so if you're approaching 65 or say you're 65, you are going to see that there's a Medicare ready fact sheet in your My Social Security account. That is because we know that you are either approaching Medicare age or you are Medicare age, and we want to share the information um, with you that you need at that moment. So that information will be in your account if you are approaching 65 or age 65. And of course, if you are interested in applying for benefits, you can always apply for benefits online. I mentioned how you could go online. That's one of the best ways to do business with us. The second best way would be to call us um, by our 1-800 number, which is 1-800-772-1213. And then, of course, if you're unable to do your business with us online or via phone, you can always visit the local office. We are seeing individuals as walk-ins. But that application can be taken in the comfort of your own home. So if you're seeking to apply for uh, retirement benefits, disability benefits, Medicare benefits, you can most certainly start that application online on our website at socialsecurity.gov. Now, anytime that I share information with people, I also like to share that there are scammers out there, especially during the holiday season, that are calling people out of the blue, and they're saying that they're Social Security representatives, but they are not. They are aggressive. They are threatening you. They are saying that they're going to suspend your Social Security number if you don't give them information or if you don't give them bank account information or gift cards. Please know that that is not us. Here at Social Security, we would never threaten you. We would never be aggressive with you. Those are red flags. So if you get a call like that, please just hang up. Do not provide um, these scammers with your personal information. And on the other side of the token, sometimes people will also say, uh, the scammers will also say, you know what, if you give me your Social Security number, if you give me your bank information, I'll give you a higher benefit amount. That is also a scam. Here at Social Security, we do not offer higher benefit amounts in return for anything. We don't, you know, we're not asking for those things. We're not asking for your bank account um, information, gift cards. We're not asking for, for money uh, in return of information. So please, 
that is a scam. That is a red flag. Just hang up. And so right here, you're going to see on this page here that um, we will not threaten you. We will not suspend your social security number. We will not demand immediate payment from you. And we will not require payment by cash, gift card, prepaid debit card, or wire transfer. These are scams. And we don't want you to fall victim to these scams. So that's why um, I always like to share this information because I want uh, you to be aware of it. And I ask that you please share this information with your friends, loved ones, and family members, because we don't want anyone to fall victim to these scams. And if you do get a call like this, and you have the number um, from that scam call, you can report that scam at oig.ssa.gov. There is a form where you can go ahead and report that, that scam call, um, because we are um, trying to make sure that we have all that documented because we know that there are there are scammers out there trying to um, obtain information from the public. We don't want you to fall victim to that. So, of course, we have additional information on our social media pages. We have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube. So if you would like additional information about Social Security's benefits and programs and you want to be updated um, as soon as something new happens, please um, visit us on our social media pages. You're going to see that all updates will be on there as soon as they happen. And I do want to share with you our website. This is our website. This is our live website. Earlier I was sharing the PowerPoint slides with you, but this is our live website. Another section of our website that I want to share with you here that's a really good um, section of our website that I like to share with people often is the very bottom. If you scroll to the very bottom, you'll see where it says contact us. If you go there, you will see there's a section where it says frequently asked questions. If you click under, if you click on get answers under the frequently asked questions section, you will see that the most frequently asked questions are on here. So this is always a great place to check out when you're curious about something or you have a social security question, you can check us out here because more than likely that question will be on here, but not just the question, the answer will be on there too. So this is a really nice section. And I want to click on the first frequently asked question. We have, how much will the COLA amount be for 2024 and when will I receive it? So this is a very popular question and I wanted to share this with everybody here because um, there is a 3.2% increase that will be happening in 2024. And 71 point million Americans will see this increase um, of 3.2% in 2024. So this information is all in our frequently asked questions section. It talks about when the increase will take effect because a lot of times people will ask, well, when will I see this increase? Well, here you have it. The increase will begin with benefits that Social Security beneficiaries receive in January 2024. Increased SSI payments will begin with December 29th of 2023. So you will see a notice in the mail. So keep an eye out for that notice. And so lots of great information here. This is our frequently asked questions section. And I just wanted to share that with everybody because that's one of the newest things here as far as what is happening. The cost of living adjustment is one of the newest updates that we have right now. And that is one of the first um, things that you see or one of the first questions you see under our most asked questions section. So please check us out on socialsecurity.gov. Lots of great information right at your fingertips on our website. If you scroll all the way down, you're also going to see that there are publications. So right under the support section, you'll see that there are publications. You can click there. And this is um, a section with booklets. And you can read the booklets or you can listen to them via audio. You can pop in your earphones and you can listen to the publications. So this is a nice feature that, that we have here online. And so if you want information about retirement benefits, you can type in retirement and hit search. And you're going to see retirement publications are going to come up. And if you click on PDF, you will see the retirement publication here. So you could either read it or you can listen to it via audio. Just a lot of great information in our publications 
section as well. So I encourage you to visit us at socialsecurity.gov and also create that My Social Security account. So Ms. Cassandra, I'm going to go ahead and pass it back over to you because I shared a lot of information here with everybody today about our online services and creating the My Social Security account. And I was wondering if you or anybody who's watching has any questions. Um, not that I see, but I do have a few people online that are on our Zoom that would like to ask questions. I have some, but I want to give it to somebody else. So um, okay. if anyone I on I... on our Zoom have a question. I think I see one here, Ms. Cassandra. Um, it popped up on my side. What is the law now as far as getting SSA benefits from an ex-spouse that passed on but had remarried, but you were the first spouse for over 20 years. So this is a great question. Now, when individuals ask me about spousal benefits, ex-spouses benefits, I always share that um, in order to receive ex-spouses benefits, an ex-spouse must have been married 10 years or more and must be able to prove that they were married 10 years or more. So Social Security will ask to see a divorce decree with the duration of marriage listed on there. Now, once again, that marriage must be 10 years or more. It cannot be shy one day of 10 years, because if it is shy one day of those 10 years, then that person would not be eligible for ex-spousal benefits. So in order to be eligible for ex-spousal benefits, you must have been married 10 years or more. And even if that individual remarried, if you are a spouse who was married 10 years or more, you can still be eligible for ex-spouse's benefits. It's always important to share um, in spousal information when you go to apply for benefits, because when we apply for our, for our own retirement benefits, the Social Security representative is going to ask us about our spousal information. And who were we married to? How long were we married to them? What is the spouse's or ex-spouse's information? Because the Social Security representative is looking to see all benefits you are entitled to. So always make sure that you share that information at the time of your appointment, or if you have additional questions as far as what am I eligible for, you're going to want to contact Social Security um, directly. Great question. Thank you. I have additional questions. Um, to that. Hi, Cassandra, this is Connie. Okay, so if the ex-spouse, I'm sorry, the current spouse goes in but never tells the um, the SSA people that she's the second spouse, how, what would happen then? So if the current spouse, well, sometimes the current spouse may not know that there was other marriages. So it would be up to the person who is the ex-spouse to contact Social Security then and let us know that they were a spouse as well to see if they're eligible for benefits as an ex-spouse. Because we never know what information that that current spouse may have. There is instances where sometimes the current spouse may not be aware of any other marriage that their spouse, is, their spouse may have had. Gotcha. So it's always important for that individual who is the ex-spouse who's inquiring about benefits to reach out to their local office. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, Great add, Auntie, are you done with your question? Yes, I am. Thank you. Okay. So in addition to what she said, okay, so now we're talking an individual that has been married twice and mm -hmm. both of the marriages had lasted over 10 years. Say the first marriage lasted 11. The second marriage lasted 15, their divorce. Can both of those spouses, ex-spouses receive Social Security? Yes. Yes. Y'all yes. got money so, like that? Well, we're paying into the system. It's, it's our money. So when we work and pay into FICA taxes, we are not only working and paying into those FICA taxes for ourselves, for a family, so even if that family is composed of two or three or four ex-spouses, that is a family. And so if that if the ex-spouses, if you were married to your ex-spouses, 
if each each marriage lasted 10 years or more, it is very well possible that the ex-spouses may be eligible for benefits off of your record. But keep in mind, those ex-spouses must take benefits off of their own record first before they can get any benefits off of, um, you know, the ex-spouse's record. So we have to look at the numbers. We have to be able to see, is that person eligible for the ex-spousal benefit? But it is possible. It is possible. There are several different scenarios. And I will say, as long as the marriage lasted 10 years or more, and if, it, if, if there were several marriages that an individual had, it, is, it is still is possible for each person to receive benefits off of the record. Okay, so I know this isn't our spousal benefits uh, session, and I apologize for the questions, but you know how it goes when we have you on here. We ask the questions that come up. These are great questions. <laughs> okay, so getting back to what I was saying, the two ex-spouses. Yes. So in order for them to do that, the okay, let's let, I'm gonna I'm gonna give um, fictional names. Okay. Say that Deborah. Are you say person A or person B? It don't matter. Say okay. That, okay. Say that Deborah was married to Charles. Okay. And their marriage was ten years. Okay. Then Linda was married to Charles, and that marriage was fifteen years. Uh huh. Linda and Deborah can get his benefits if they applied for theirs. First, am I understanding that correctly? If they applied for theirs first and their benefit is less, if there is the spouses, the ex spouse is still alive, if their benefit is less than 50% of their ex spouse's benefits, it's possible that they could get benefits. They each could get benefits off of that ex spouse's record. Okay. Because if you are currently, if you are somebody who is an ex-spouse and that uh, the ex-spouse that you're, you're looking to collect benefits off of is still living, you can only collect up to 50% of that benefit if you're at full retirement age. Now, it is possible, um, but if there is instances where a person is not eligible to collect because say they made um, high income and their own benefit is greater than what they could collect off of an ex-spouse's record. Then they wouldn't be able to collect anything off of that ex-spouse's record. So I'm gonna give you an example here. We're gonna say that I am full retirement age right now, 67. And we're gonna say, um, Mr. Mueller and I, we were married 10 years and we're divorced. Now, Mr. Mueller married, um, we're going to say Sally. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Mueller went from Josephine to Sally and he married Sally and Sally, um, he was married to her. We're going to say the 15 years. Now I, we're going to say I made high income. So my own social security benefit is $3,000 per month. Okay, Mr. Mueller, his benefit is $2,000 per month. He's full retirement age, 67. That's his full retirement age, and that's what his benefit is, $2,000 per month. My benefit at full retirement age is $3,000 per month. Okay, I'm divorced from him. I was married 10 years or more. I may be eligible for benefits as an ex-spouse, but my own benefit is greater than 50% of his benefits. He gets $2,000 per month. My own benefit is $3,000 per month. So I'm not eligible for ex-spousal benefits on his record. But he also was married to Sally. But Sally was a homemaker. And so Sally didn't work outside of the household. And now he was married to Sally for 15 years. Sally's also an ex-spouse. But Sally was a homemaker. So Sally doesn't have any earnings on her own record. So she isn't collecting any, or is not eligible to collect Social Security retirement benefits off of her own record because she doesn't have enough earnings. But she was married to him 15 years. Sally is also full retirement age right now, 67. Sally can collect the full half off of my ex-husband's record, Mr. Mueller's record. She'll be able to collect 
$1,000 off of his record because we said his benefit is $2,000 per month. Now you see here, I would be eligible, but my own benefit is greater than what I could get off of his record. So that makes me not eligible. Sally, she is um, eligible and she's collect, going to collect because she does, she's, she doesn't have any earnings off of her own record and she can collect the full half off of Mr. Mueller's record. Okay, but let's just say, let's take it a, another step. Let's say Mr. Mueller, after he was married to me and, and got divorced, and then after he was married to Sally for 15 years and got divorced, he got married to um, Mary. And he was married to Mary for another 10 years. And now Mary worked outside of the household and Mary earned, um, you know, she earned some income, but her own benefit is $500. And now Mary's divorced from Mr. Mueller as well, but she gets $500 off of her own social security record. And she's full retirement age 67 right now. Well, Mr. Mueller's record, we said it's $2,000 per month. What's going to happen in Mary's situation is, is Mary is going to collect her own $500 from her own record from Social Security every month because she has to apply for home benefit first. And then she's going to collect another $500 off, off of Mr. Mueller's record to bump her up to that half, to that thousand. And she's an ex-spouse too, but she was married 10 years or more. So she was able to prove that. And she's going to get um, her own benefit because she has to apply for own benefit first at $500 and a portion of Mr. Mueller's benefit because she is eligible for up to half of his benefit at full retirement age. So as you can see here, these are three different wives. Mr. Mueller was married three different times, three different situations. Um, I didn't get anything because I made significant income outside of the household. So my own benefit is higher than what I could get off of his record. So I'm, I'm the wife that doesn't get anything off of the record. The second wife, she got the full half because she worked inside the household. She didn't work outside of the household. And the third wife, well, she worked some outside of the household, so she's going to get some of her benefit plus some of his. So essentially, that is how it works. So um, that's why when somebody asks me, well, can more than one spouse collect benefits off of a, a, a ex-spouse's record? I say, yeah, it's possible. But we have to look to see what's going on with that ex-spouse. Uh, before we determine if that person is is actually eligible to receive the benefit. Great question. There's so many different scenarios. So I always let people know, contact their local office um, just to make sure and make sure when you are, are taking an app, when you're doing an application, you give us all the information that you, you possibly can that you have so that way we can make sure we're looking on our end to see everything that you're eligible for. So great, great question. Any other questions here, Ms. Cassandra? Um, no, someone is saying it's great information. That's, um, that's good. all I'm so I, glad. yeah, that's all I see on um Facebook. Um, I don't know if anyone else has any more questions here on our Zoom. No, okay, all right. So, but let me just let me just say we're coming to the end of the year. And we have been working with Miss Mueller for the last three years, two and a half years, because she started midway through um, 2020. And I just want to thank her for always coming on, giving us giving us information. Um, we will, if she's willing to come back again in 2024, because like she said, information is always changing. Um, mm -hmm. She will make sure that she gives the, no matter what the topic is, she will always give us information about the website, scamming, um, getting your own account. But we go over any and everything, social security, whether it's spousal benefits, um, wounded warrior program, disability, all of that. And Ms. Mueller and, and Daniel, he's not here right now. Uh, Daniel Summers, he's her counterpart um, that comes on. And I, I just love the fact that you are willing to come on here and share this information. And hopefully one day we'll do a face-to-face -face and 
have those that can't make it still do the zoom in, but this right here is, is a wonderful thing. And I do appreciate you. Um, um, I do appreciate you. I'm just reading messages. Thank you, Miss Cassandra. And you know, Daniel and I, my colleague, we appreciate you and we thank you. And we're so grateful to you, Miss Cassandra. We're grateful that you um, allow us to be here with you on this platform to share this very important information because, you know, we, Daniel and I, we have a passion for sharing information to help people. And we truly love um, working here at Social Security because we love to share information that's going to help people prepare, prepare for their future. So whenever we can get the word out there to help somebody to prepare for their future or to help somebody who is in the situation right now, maybe they're retiring right now, maybe they're applying for Medicare right now, and they're not sure of what to do, or, um, you know, they're They've got, they've got questions. We are here to answer them. And so we're, we're so grateful to you to allow us the opportunity to share the information here because we know that we are coming across people and we're helping people. And that is, those are our full intentions. That is truly what we are passionate about. And we're just so grateful to you. And I know I've had an opportunity to meet you a few times in person, Miss Cassandra. And, you know, it's so nice that We've, we've had this opportunity to, to do things virtually, but I'm so grateful to have been able to meet you in person and just to, just to thank you for, for allowing us to be here with you and with everybody here at Top, Top Flight. We are definitely, definitely eager to um, provide information and presentations in 2024 and going forward because we absolutely um, love our partnership with you and we love to share information with everybody here. So thank you to you and thank you to your entire, um, you know, viewers, your entire team. Um, we are just extremely grateful. Oh, I appreciate you. Now the increase. Oh, let's talk about increase. I, I just thought about that. So the increase yes. in 2024. Is that coming like right in January in a couple of days yeah. or? Yeah, January. So individuals will be seeing those letters to their mailing address. If you haven't already received the letter showing you that you're going to be receiving an increase, um, you will be seeing it soon. Uh, that increase will be happening in January. If you are somebody who's receiving SSI, you're going to see that it is going to um, pop up for you in December. But for everybody else, you're going to see that increase in January. So keep an eye out for it. And if you visit us on that section of our page, ssa.gov, you will see that um, under our FAQs, that's the first That's the first thing that comes up as one of the most frequently asked questions. I'm going to go back down here, Ms. Cassandra, where it says contact mm -hmm. us, because it's under the Get Answers page right here. How much will the COLA amount be for 2024, and when will I receive it? So this is something that, you know, it's a hot topic right now, and we're going to see that 3.2% increase because that's that COLA, the cost of living adjustment, and it is going to take effect, um, and people will see that uh that, in, that uh, increase January of 2024, increased SSI payments will begin with December 29, 2023 payment. But for everybody else, expect to see it January 2024. And if you have a My Social Security account, you're going to be able to see that notice in your My Social Security account starting early December if you already have a My Social Security account. If you don't already have a My Social Security account and you're just creating it now, um, you're probably not going to see that notice. So um, I encourage you to, to wait for that mail notice. You will see that mail notice for sure. But um, you will see that, that benefit amount increase for you, for you in January of 2024. So great um, question, one last Cassandra. question um, on yes. appeals. I um I had to appeal something and they told me form five sixty one was one of yeah them. yeah. So we have a section on our webpage where it talks about appeal a decision we made. 
Uh, this gives individuals an opportunity to appeal the decision right online. I always um, encourage people to go online to do the appeal because you're able to track it a little bit easier. If you do it online, um, it's done electronically and then you can see the status of it um, on our website. You can also send the form in um, and you will also see the status if you send the form in, but it just takes a little bit more time. So I always let people know, um, the, I encourage people to go online and do it online, but of course we also have the paper form available. So right here, this is the section where it says appeal a decision we made. All I did was I went into our search engine here under ssa.gov and I typed in appeal and this came up for us. You go to request the reconsideration, start by asking us to reconsider. I clicked here, I'm gonna click here. Now, you can do two types of appeal. Request a disability reconsideration if you are requesting to appeal a disability um, decision or request a non-medical reconsideration. So this is for everything else that you are appealing or you do not agree with, say some, you got a letter recently in the mail and you don't agree with it you can start a non-medical request. But if you are requesting to appeal a disability decision, you want to click here where it says start disability request. Once you go there, you can start a new appeal and enter in your appeal information. Now, you mentioned a form, Ms. Cassandra. Yes, SSA right 561. Yes, and you will see here on our page, the appeal process. If you click here on this right link, it is gonna tell you about the process and it is gonna tell you that you can use that form right here, SSA 561, okay? Now you can fill out the paper form. You can look for the form on our website, fill out the paper form, mail it to us or fax it to us. But I encourage people to complete the application right online because that is going to go into our system much quicker. It's just going to go in there right away. So this is the same thing. F the, this is the same form, but just online. If you go here to this online section, you click start new appeal. Essentially, you're filling out that form. You go ahead and you, um, you agree to the terms and the conditions. You do have 60 days from the date of the decision notice to appeal the decision. You go here, you agree to the terms and the conditions, you click next, and then you, you fill out your appeal. So this is um, the most efficient way to, con to, to complete an appeal. But of course, as you mentioned, yes, you can fill out, if you feel more comfortable filling out the paper, SSA 561 and submitting it via mail or via fax, you can also do that as well. Those are alternative methods. But I wanted to share here with everybody the way you can do that form right online. Somebody asked a question, can you appeal the amount that they're taking out for Medicare? So you can always appeal a decision within 60 days of your notice, but I will tell you um, the Medicare amount, the Medicare amount, there's a standard premium for Medicare that we all have to pay. It's a standard Medicare Part B premium. Um, some people pay more than the standard uh, individuals who have applied or enrolled in Medicare after their initial enrollment period and say they don't qualify for a special enrollment period and they've enrolled during a general enrollment period. Individuals in that situation incur a 10% penalty per year past age 65. Um, that is a penalty that is there because um, Medicare, it was late enrollment in Medicare. You can most certainly appeal, but it wouldn't be something that um, uh, will, would likely get, um, you know, taken away that 10% penalty because that's something that we incur if we have late enrollment. However, there may be instances, and you know, there's always different scenarios. There may be instances where maybe there was an error, or maybe there was a special enrollment. So you do have the right to appeal. You have 60 days from the decision notice. We never know exactly what the circumstances, the circumstance is unless we are made aware of it. So you do have the right to appeal that 60 day appeal period. But um, 
I always let people know you can appeal right online, um, but if you would like to do a paper appeal, you can also do that. Okay. Great. Well, I thank you once again, Ms. Mueller, and we will um, be back on in January, I don't know. Let's see what, what we want to start our topic off with in January. Yeah, well, you know, January is during, um, is January, February, and March is our general enrollment period for Medicare. So maybe we can start with Medicare since, you know, this is one of our last questions about Medicare. Can I appeal the premium? You know, we can dive deeper into Medicare so that we can inform individuals about um, the late uh, enrollment uh, penalty, that 10%. Um, we can enroll, we can inform individuals about the initial in the special enrollment period so that we can avoid that late enrollment penalty. Um, okay. I think that's, that's something that's really, really critical. And we want to make sure everybody is aware of that. So that way, um, you know, you don't, you don't get penalized because you're aware of that, those enrollment periods. And if you are somebody enrolling in general enrollment period, um, because maybe something did happen and that's the enrollment period that, that you fall into, it's okay. You're in your general enrollment period in January, February, March. And if you want to enroll, that is the time to do it. So that way your Part B can be effective immediately and you can get the coverage that you need. So yeah, I think Medicare would be a great topic to start off with, Ms. Cassandra, if that's okay with you. Um, yep. We can most certainly do that. That's perfect. So I in letting the audience know that um, Ms. Mueller and Mr. Summers come on the fourth Wednesday of every month. So January, whatever that fourth Wednesday is, we will be talking about Medicare. So look out for the flyer and the Zoom link. And uh, I'm going to end with Facebook and then I'm going to stop the recording. So I want to thank all of my followers on Facebook Sending you a big old heart. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. See you next year. Continue to follow Top Flight Defense Incorporated on all of our social, our social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you miss any of our, um, our classes, they are on our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and Google Top Flight Defense Inc. and you will see all 168 videos that we have. But thank you everyone on Facebook. I love you and there's nothing you could do about it. See you next year. Thank you everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay.